Hello, please do subscribe if you aren't already. So in this video I'm going to share with you the approach I take to creating a collage background uh, in a Constantina sketchbook. And I do that um, as a sort of a start point and then I work over that. I'm not going to show you the working over today, I'm purely going to be showing you uh, the way in which I develop the background. And uh, the project I'm focusing on is my ramshackles and that are these dilapidated buildings that I'm interested in that's forming a new series for me. Just a couple of things before we get going. Firstly, um, if you're not already following me on Pinterest, I'd love for you to do so. And I'll put a link to that in the notes. And also I have a newsletter, so I'll put a link to that if you're interested. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, please do make comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So what I've got here is uh, the Sea White Brighton Constantina, but although I usually use a pocket Constantina, this is one that I've had for quite a long time, and it's one of the A5 ones. This is just the cover because I've got it spread out on the table. And what has happened is that I used it for something and then cut some of the first pages out um, and then reattached the cover, which sounds a bit complicated, but the useful thing about <laughs> that happening is that it fits in the box quite well. So even though I'm going to add papers and all sorts, usually they get so big that they only just sort of squeeze in and you can't get them out. Whereas now I think it will be loose enough, but that's just to explain what I'm using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just provide this sort of messy, sort of interesting background. And what I'm going to use is I've got some uh, torn pieces of work that I've done on location and some in the studio mark making. I'm going to use those. I've got some pieces that are from the gel plate and quite a few of those, mostly quite neutral. I don't want to be adding too much colour because I'm going to keep this pretty much monotone. And then I've got, I've got matte medium to stick these things down. I've got some bought tissue paper, you know, napkins, pattern paper, tissue paper with pattern on it, brown paper. And then subsequently, once I've stuck paper down, and I'm also going to just grab some tape because I'm going to stick some tape down onto it as well because it creates interesting things when you put ink over. And I'm also going to probably, I don't know yet, but I probably I'm going to use this as a bit of a pattern maker and put some paint on and press that on, but only after I've stuck down the tissues. Once oh, to the papers, once I've got the paper's stuck down and dried, then I will finish by putting some ink down. And then that will provide a nice, interesting, uh, sort of general background that I can then work over with um, my, my mixed media uh, uh, materials out on location with the ramshackle building. So the intention is that I use this for, I'm calling my ramshackle project. So I start with you adding the tape and I'm just putting it randomly really in different directions. There's quite a bit of book um, to cover as you can see and I'm not putting it on every page. Um, and now I'm just coming in with, with paper and to start with I'm sort of laying a few out so I get a bit of a feel for it. And then I'm just, as you can see, I'm not putting them in any particular order. Uh, as I build it, you'll see I'm trying to get a variety of sizes, but at the moment what I'm trying to do is to just get some of the paper onto the pages uh, and then I start worrying about, you know, the variety of sizes and so on later. So I'm using the matte uh, medium to glue the things down. Here I'm coming in now with pattern paper and you can see I'm adding some larger pieces because I've got that available to me and I'm trying to put it in different orientations but also trying to think a little bit about the fact that what the, these are the ramshackles so they are buildings, old dilapidated buildings. So inevitably there's going to be a bit of a perspective, there's going to be things that are closer, things that are further away. So I'm trying to get a variety of sizes uh, into it with some bigger pieces um, on some of the pages as well, together with smaller pieces. Um, per perhaps thinking that these, you know, might be things that are buildings going into the distance. So you get that sense of something close to you being bigger and then smaller, for, sm smaller further away. So in any case, I'm just building up the pages now, trying to get some sort of contrasts in, if you like, with the papers. So they're not all the same. Some are big, some are small. Some have got marks on them, some patterns, patterns going different directions. Um, and I'm just building it slowly, slowly as I go. 
so that hopefully by the end I have something that might be quite messy but at least it's got variety and I'm coming in now with the tissue paper and then I sort of look th back through all of the pages just to see if I've got broadly you know a, a spread and I haven't got any blank pages it's a little bit more difficult when you've got a big book like this because you've obviously got more than you can fit on a desk and also you've got more to 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 cover um, but that being said, it's not too bad. It didn't doesn't take too long. Um, I've obviously had sort of downtime for drying and leaving it to dry thoroughly in between times. And now I'm using the pattern paper, which is also always really interesting. So just building it up, building it up until I have something that is um, quite full. So now I've dried the stuck on pieces of uh, paper and I have to say it does look quite a mess. So there's another couple of things I'm gonna do. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, to use uh, some of these things, corrugated paper, some embossed uh, printed uh, paper and uh, some spent sequin waste. And I'm gonna use that to uh, do some stenciling on here. And what I've done is I've mixed up some white and some Payne's Grey and it's a golden Payne's Grey. So as you can hopefully see, it's gone quite very blue, um, which is OK. I don't mind that. And uh, I'm going to now um, just sort of do it quite randomly. And then once that's dry, I'm going to finally I've got some uh, gesso here and I'm just going to scrape some of that on and maybe mark make into that as another uh, texture and interest but also to to maybe simplify a little bit and then very finally uh, I'm going to select some sort of monotonish kind of neutralish uh, inks maybe two or three and use that to kind of cover it and then that will all be dried and that will be then my background for uh, doing some some work over so to start with, I'm uh, using the stencils and I'm putting some of that uh, grey paint over the different patterns. And I'm trying not to be too thinky. I'm, as you can see, although obviously it's speeded up, I'm pretty much just uh, blotching it anywhere, uh, just creating some variety and putting it in different places and in different areas and over different things. Uh, and now I'm coming in with the gesso uh, and covering up to about a third uh, with this white and I'm using just a piece of card to scrape it on and then I scrape into it with knitting needles and whatnot just to create patterning and then finally here once it's dry I'm adding ink and I'm using three different inks I'm using Indian ink I'm using walnut ink and I'm using a Liquitex uh, grey ink muted grey ink and I'm spraying water and then adding the inks and as you can see I'm tipping and turning being careful because it's very messy and blotching it uh, with the tissue paper and finally once it is dry I actually sellotape the back so that it doesn't come apart because it does get some brutal treatment as you can see here So here are the pages uh, that I've completed ready to work over, or some of them, and I'm just going to flick through to end with to show you what they look like. And as I say, I'm going to be working over these. So some quite interesting patterns and effects and marks uh, as a sort of interesting background. And some of these will will be, you know, will become useful as start points. I can see how that might be useful, whatever. And, and other parts might well be covered over and more paper put onto them, depending. And this working over, some of it uh, might be done on location, but quite a bit of it might be done actually from memory and from uh, looking again at drawings and things done on location, because I'm quite keen to see this sort of 
um, the the hand of, of a little bit more abstraction or a little bit more of some of the working from memory. Uh, and I think that's where it might get quite interesting. So there you are, that's the uh, end of the book. So thanks very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.